Hello, in this video, we're going to be learning about um, uh, scikit-learn pipelines. Um, we've been learning um, how to use linear regression as a model. And um, often our model will have to transform the data in some sort of way um, before we can actually analyze it. And so what we'll end up with for our models are these pipelines where we do a series of transformations. And then at the end, um, we'll use an estimator is what they call it in, in scikit-learn to actually make predictions. And, um, and so for this example, I'm going to be using a slightly more complicated data set. Um, in, in Chicago, right, which is right on Lake Michigan, they have all these sensors on different beaches which are measuring things about the waves. And so I'm going to be um, looking at this data set of all these measurements. So I can see, well, here's an Ohio beach, here's um, 63rd Street Beach. And then I know all, all these things about these sensors, like how warm is the water, um, turbidity, um, other things like that. And the why that we're going to try to predict is, well, how big are the waves on this beach? And, um, and we're going to be using things like um, um, like wave period to predict it, or maybe by looking directly at what beach we're on. And, um, and so there's some garbage data in here, so I've cleaned that up. So this is a, a picture of all the data where I have the wave period um, on the, on the x-axis, and then on the y-axis I have wave height. Um, then I also try to break it down and to look beach by beach. So here I'm um, kind of pulling out all the beaches um, as a, a sorted list that's unique from be the beach name. Um, and then what am I doing down here? I'm, I'm drawing each beach separately. So I'm, I'm creating some subplots and uh, I'm looping over those and I'm, I'm basically plotting each beach, right? I'm doing some filtering in, in pandas. So I'm plotting each beach in a different um, AX region. And so I look at this. And, and so there's a couple observations right away. Often before I do modeling, I like to just do a lot of scatter plots and, and try to get an intuition for what's going on. One is that I do see that what beach we're on is an important variable. Um, some of these beaches have different patterns in terms of the waves. The other thing I see is that, um, that the relationship between wave period and wave height um, is not linear. Um, it's not as if the bigger the wave period, the bigger the wave height or vice versa. What I see is often there's kind of like this hump in the middle, right? So kind of if we want to get the biggest waves, we need a wave period that's somewhere in the middle. So I'm going to be making four different models here um, that try to analyze this data. Um, and they're each going to be using different variables in different ways. Um, first will be something very similar to what we've done before. I'll try to predict the wave height based on wave period just using a simple linear regression. And then we'll see what performance we have there. Um, next, we're going to learn how we can do um, a, a polynomial FET, right? So that means if I'm drawing a line on here, well, the line doesn't have to be straight anymore. Um, finally, I'm going to look at, uh, well, not finally, but next I'm going to look at what beach. If, I, if the only thing I know is what beach I'm on, how well can I predict? And then finally, I'm going to look at the combination of both beach and wave period, uh, with wave period being treated as a polynomial, then see how much I can predict there. So in terms of my imports, I have some things that we've done before. Uh, we've um, The first thing we learned was how to do a linear regression. We would um, fit our linear regression to a training data set, and then we would evaluate it on a test data, data set um, at the very end. Um, along the way, we might also do cross-validation within just the training data set. So these things are, are old, and then these things down here are new, right? So um, in order to be able to... Um, deal with this data, uh, and I want in a polynomial way, I might have to transform it using this polynomial features thing. Um, if I want to deal with categorical data, like, well, what beach am I on? That's not a number, right? That's a category. I have to use this thing called one-hot encoder. And, um, and if I want to use both of those, I have to use this other thing, make column transformer to combine them. And in total, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this pipeline. And in the end of the pipeline, I'm still going to be doing just a simple linear regression but I'm going to be making all these transformations to the data before it gets to that. And, uh, and that's how I'm going to be able to do these more complicated models. So let's start down here. And um, I'm going to call, I'm just trying to number these four models, um, one, two, three, four, just following the numbering up here. And so I'm going to have model one is going to be just a simple linear regression like that. And, um, and then what I could do is I could say um, M1, well, actually, I could do different things. I could say uh, m1.fit, and I would fit that to my x values, and then my y values here. This is uppercase because it's a full data frame, and then this is lowercase because it's just um, a single series. And um, and I guess before I have to do that, I actually have to separate out my train uh, data frame from my test data frame. 
I'm going to say train test split df. And maybe I'll just look at the length of both of these. And so about 25% is going into testing, which I'll, I'll be fine with that. And so then down here, I have to have my train df. And then here I can put a list of features. And then over here, I may have my train df again. And then I'm just going to have my y column. And so my y column, the thing I'm trying to predict is just, well, the wave height like that. And then my list of features, um, well, first off, I've put a list here, and that's why I get these weird double brackets. Um, I'm just going to start with wave period, just like that. And um, I probably have to capitalize to match what is in my um, data frame from earlier if I, if I check back. Um, yep, it looks like all these things are capitalizing. And so I can do that. And, um, and now uh, this model has learned the pattern. And so then what I could do is I could say m1.predict uh, based on my testing data. So I could say test df, right? So I give it um, only x values, and then it's going to predict what these y values are for me. And so let me, um, oh, why did I call it m2, m1? And so I get all these predictions. And then what I could do is I could compare those predictions to what I actually have for that wave period. Right, I can compare these numbers to these numbers down here, and at a glance I see it's not very close. Um, the easier way for me to do that comparison and actually get a score will be, I call the scoring, right? So the score function will automatically call that predict on this, and then it'll compare that to um, my test df of wave height, and it will tell me what percentage of the variance I'm explaining there. And I see right now it's terrible, right? I'm not really explaining uh, anything. If I just um, always predicted the average wave height, that would be better than what I'm, I'm doing right now. Now, of course, some of this is luck in terms of like how I um, did my train test split. And so the more reliable way to get a measure here, let me just print that, would be to do my cross-validation. Right, so I can say cross-validation score. And then here I have to give it three things. I have to say, well, what is my model? My model is M1. Um, what are my um, x values and what are my y values? I'm going to do this up here. And, um, and when I'm doing the cross-validation, I, I usually do that all within the training data. And I just try to hold back the test data for the very end of my project um, to have a final analysis. So now I see I actually get a variety of scores. And we can see that, yeah, it is a matter of luck. Sometimes I, I do worse than zero. Most of the time, not. Um, I can say how many pieces I want to break my data into. Remember that I cycle through each piece or fold, and it has its turn being the, the test data set, so I can get more number here, numbers here. Maybe I'm just going to say scores equals that, and I could say scores.mean. And so this is probably a better indication of how well my model is doing. I'm explaining um, one-tenth of one percent of the pattern, which is not too surprising, right? All I'm using is the wave period, and I'm trying to fit a straight line to this. And I can see, well, yeah, no surprise, I can't fit a straight line to it. Okay, um, if I wanted to, um, let me just copy this for a moment. I'm going to delete it shortly. If I wanted to do more columns, um, that would be an easy thing to do. So for example, if I wanted to also include, uh, let's say like the water temperature, I could easily add that as another column, right? Um, it's very simple to have multiple X values, right? So I can do that here and, uh, and then down here as well. And, and then maybe I get a slightly different score. Still not great, right? You know, just trying to delete this here, right? But it's very easy to add these different things. And, and why is that? Well, when I when I do this and I put that list here, I'm just getting a simple data frame of, um, of X columns that I want to use for my predictions. Okay, so that's, um, that's how we can add things. Let's actually think about how we're going to do this now. I want to have a polynomial um, FET. So what we'll do is, let me actually delete all of this. Um, I'm just going to create a demo here, which is going to be a copy of my train df. And uh, in my train df, I'm going to have uh, just a um, uh, wave period. Let me take a look at this data frame. Uh, what we're going to be doing, if I want to have, um, uh, say, like a quadratic fit, I want to um, just add some columns down here that are going to contain that squared data. And so I could do things like this. I could say demo. Um, uh, oh, I could say uh, period squared um, equals demo 
of wave period that or I could have like one that's cubed like this and um, um, and why is that unhappy um, oh because I'm doing like a, a comparison not an assignment so I just assume that's already exists and so if I do that then um, and you know what I want to do, I actually want to copy this so that it doesn't complain. Um, I can see what I'll do is that this column, well, 2 squared is 2, 2 cubed is 8, 3 squared is 9, 3, uh, three uh, cubed is 27. And so what I can actually do is I can do a linear regression across these things, right? And so even though it's technically a linear regression, it's trying to act like a, um, a quadratic or cubic regression because... Um, because I'm just treating these as regular columns, right? And I can put um, kind of weights to how important these things are. And so how can I do this? So here I was just manually adding these things. Um, if I want to, I can use this polynomial features thing. And so down here I may say poly um, equals polynomial features. And I can say poly.fit transform. And what I want to do, I want to um, transform my data right here. Um, this was what I had before. So I'm going to run this thing and I see that I get all these different columns and um, and if I wanted to, let me capture those in, in data, right? This is one of those NumPy arrays which we'll eventually learn about. Um, until we learn about it, I just want to put it in a, in a pandas data frame so I can better see what's happening. So I'm going to say pandas.data frame and then I'm going to put my data there. And then I want to figure out what the column names are on those. And it turns out that this thing will tell me that as well. So I can say, um, uh, I'm sorry, poly will tell me that. Uh, so I can say poly.lit feature names, just like that. And I actually have to say columns equals that. And, um, and now I can see, well, I have um, x and then x squared. And I actually have to tell what my original name was for that to work. Um, I should have to have like a list of that, excuse me. And, and so I can see, okay, well I have period and I have period squared. And if I wanted to up here, I could say um, things like, well, I want to have it be a fourth degree, right? So I could have period, period squared, period cubed, period to the fourth. You can see it also is giving me period to the zeroth, which is just a column of ones, right? And so what I'll often do is I'll disable that. It's called the bias column. So I'll say, I don't want that thing. And, and, and so now I actually have something that's very similar to what I did above manually. And I could do that um, with my data, right? I could, um, if I wanted to, I could do this transformation on both my training data and then my test data. And then that's what I would do all my modeling on. Now, I think to keep things simpler, what we'll want to do is we'll want to automatically um, transform and then immediately apply um, the linear regression. And so it turns out that um, pipelines, which I also imported up here, uh, make that really easy to do, right? So I can create a pipeline down here like this. And maybe I'll just draw this. Um, this is going to be my second model. It's going to be a pipeline. And then we have to pass in a list here. Um, and the way the list works is that I will have like transformers. Um, uh, and I might have like one or more of those. And then at the end, I'm going to have an estimator, right? So all of these things are going to be um, modifying my data in some way, maybe adding more columns. And then at the very end, I'm going to actually do my um, real model. And my real model is just a linear uh, regression like that. And then here, well, what are my transformers? Well, I'm just going to do polynomial features like this. And, um, and I think degree of two will be fine for us for now. And so I have these two things. And um, then the other detail about this pipeline is that we have to name um, each of our stages of the pipeline. And the way that it wants us to do that is it wants us to put these things in, in parentheses to create a tuple and then put a name as the first part of the tuple. So I'm going to call this um, transformer poly because it's a polynomial um, uh, transformer. And then this thing, um, I don't know, I'll just call that LR for short, right? It doesn't really matter. All right, so let me just take a look here. Um, M2, it kind of shows me all these details of it, but now M2 is just a, a, a model, right? And it's a lot like a simple linear regression. Um, I can do it in all the same ways. So for example, if I head back here, 
um, all of this stuff I did before, uh, you know, I just created M1 as my um, as my model and I did all this stuff on it. I can do all those same things down here, right? So if I if I run down here and I just say M2 dot fit, um, and maybe I'll just delete this for simplicity. Um, everything is the same, and, and I can see well maybe I'm doing slightly better now, right? So what was my score before? Actually, that's exactly the same. I was expecting to do slightly better. And why wasn't I doing better? Probably because I was evaluating my same model. That's the curse of the of the copy paste. Okay, so so before let me just see this. I was explaining a 0.1 percent. Uh, well, I guess closer to 0.2 percent of the variance, and now I'm explaining more like uh, 4.6 percent. So I can see that model two is a huge improvement on model one. And the only thing I really did there, I'm still doing a linear regression. But I'm just giving it a little bit more information to work with by um, giving it these extra columns. I have a column that says something like wave period squared. And drawing way back here, the intuition is right, is I'm fitting a line here. And that line doesn't have to be straight anymore. It can be a quadratic line that kind of curves. Okay, so we have two of these models. We have this one, which was terrible, right? It told me almost nothing. Sometimes this one, um, depending on your trained test data set, would actually... Um, lead you farther away from the truth than if you just always guess the average. Um, this one is actually doing somewhat well, right? It, it's explaining almost 5% of the variance. Um, let's try uh, the beach and, uh, and see how we can uh, do that. So that'll be my third model. And so if I come down here, um, I think for this one, I'm just going to go back to here and, and try this as a first attempt. Maybe I should have some comments here, right? So this is uh, this is um, uh, poly on period, and then what was this one up here? So model one, this was just linear on period, and then I'm going to try doing um, uh, you know linear on beach is what I'm trying to try do right now. And so if I have this model, I'm going to call this model three, and I'm going to delete this again just to keep it clean. I'm going to do this down here. Um, the main thing I want to do is instead of having it be wave period, I want it to be the beach name. And if I had it all the way up here, I just see, well, that's beach name. Okay, so I'm going to head down here and I want to predict the wave height based on beach name. All right, so just like that. And then this is also beach name down here. And this is trying to um, complain to me. And what does it complain about? It says, could not convert to a float. Ohio street name, street beach is not. Um, it to not be converted to a float. And that makes a lot of sense, right? So this thing here, um, if I take a look at it, is that's categorical data. And it turns out the linear regression, we'll eventually learn why, but it wants everything to be um, numeric. And, and so that's a problem. And so how do I, how do I, um, how do I deal with this? I mean, maybe one idea that students sometimes come up with is that I could encode these. I could say like one means Ohio Beach, uh, and then maybe two means a Calumet uh, Beach, and then maybe three means something like uh, Montrose Beach. And the problem is, is that if I put these numbers like this, um, the linear regression model is going to assume they're meaningful. And so what that means is that if the model learns something about Ohio Beach, and then it learns something about Montrose Beach, it mistakenly thinks it knows something about Calumet Beach. It's going to think that that's somehow the average of these other children. Of course, that's not true, right? I mean, just I kind of arbitrarily put these numbers here. There's no reason to believe that this beach has characteristics that are kind of average of other two. So that's not trying to work, right? I can't encode it that way. The idea that we're going to use instead is called one-hot encoding. And one-hot encoding looks like this. Uh, one-hot encoder be like that and I can say one hot encoder dot fit transform I'm going to fit transform um, this data right here and I get this weird thing that's well whatever is that that's like a it says it's like a sparse matrix um, we're going to eventually learn more about that but I can convert it to this thing which is um is uh is a numpy array and then that thing I can actually put into maybe I'm going to simplify this a bit that thing I can actually put into a data frame, right? So I'm going to say pandas dot data frame, just like this. And then just like before, I want to figure out what these columns are. And, and so just like with the polynomial transformer, I could say get feature names 
uh, same deal here, right? I can say uh, one hot dot get feature names uh, like that. And then I have to tell it, well, what was I originally operating with? And I guess I was like the beach. And why is that unhappy? So the shape of the values passed is this, and, and the indices imply something like that. I wonder what is drawing out wrong there. I think my problem is that I, I need to say like columns equals that. Um, okay, and so how is this working? So the first one, my first row was Ohio Beach. And you see that I have actually a column for each different beach. And what we'll do is we'll set, within that, we'll set it to one if it's an Ohio Beach, and then it'll be zero in all the others. Um, if I go a few down, I see that I have a Montrose Beach in position four, right? And so that case, I'll, I'll put a one under Montrose Beach and then a zero is under others. And that's why we call it one hot, right? So I guess the place where it's hot is where we have a one and then um, everywhere else it's a zero, right? So if I have this, even though I started with some um, um, categorical data, I can end up with something where, um, um, where I have a bunch of numbers. And so if I, if I clean this up here, let me go back to this. I may actually delete all of this because this was kind of a dead end, right? Um, what will be a closer inspiration is the pipeline I used before with, um, um, with, the, with the polynomial features because just like polynomial features is a transformer, um, so also is one hot encoding, right? So I'm gonna tweak this. We're on model three now. And this is one hot. And here I can just blow all this away and I can say one hot encoder, just like that. And then I can do my linear regression down here. And so then I can say, um, down here I can say, uh, I think it was like beach name, right? So beach name and then, uh, actually I don't even need this, right? I'm, I'm kind of, this will automatically do the fitting for me and tell me how well it's doing. Um, I wonder why this is complaining up here. I get nervous that that's red. Anyway, it'll probably tell me shortly. Um, I can say beach name here. And then let me try that. And then sure enough, it's invalid syntax um, because I didn't have a match there. And so this does even better than before, right? So I guess just looking at the beach name is even better than knowing what the wave period is. Right, so my model is getting better and better, right? First I started with just a linear model on uh, uh, on the wave period, and then that's terrible, right? I'm not even explaining 1%. Then I said, well, let's do a polynomial fit on uh, on the wave period, and I'm explaining almost um, almost 5%, and, uh, four and a, well, about 4.5%. Then I just look at only at the beach, and I get 5.5%. And so the um, kind of natural next thing to do is, well, um, let's do the regress regression on both beach and um, and also a polynomial of the um, wave period. And maybe I can do even better, right? Maybe the, both of these things are providing me some information. And, and so here's where I get um, to have a challenge, right? Because I want to do one hot encoding on the beach name and I want to do polynomial features on my other column, right? So I have to have some sort of way of combining these things. And it turns out that that's that last piece that I imported up here. The make column transformer is going to let me stitch together multiple transformers, each of which applies um, to a different column. So I'm going to come down here and, um, and I'm going to copy this for my inspiration for, um, for kind of model four. All right, so I'm going to have model four now. And what am I going to do? So this is what has to change, right? Somehow I have to have something here that can capture both columns, right? Because what I'm going to do down here is I'm going to pass in both beach name and wave period like that in an effort to, um, to predict my wave height. And so how do I do that? Well, I'm going to call that thing that I imported, which was uh, make column transformer. And when uh, I'm calling that thing. And when I'm calling that, uh, what I'll do is I'll have just a series of transformers. And so I'll have like transformer one and then transformer two. And if I wanted to, I could have more, but I don't need that in this case. Um, each of these things, each of these transformers is going to be a tuple. And the tuple will be the transformer. 
and then it will be um, a list of the columns that it applies to, right? So, so both are going to be like this, right? I have these um, tuples, and maybe I'll just try to put a new line there. So I'm have these two transformers and then a list of columns. And so I think what I want to do is I want to do um, one hot encoding of the beach name, right? So I'm going to copy my one hot encoder right here. And then what column does that apply to? Well, that applies to the beach name column. And then my other one was polynomial features, which I should just copy from up above. That was this thing right here. Polynomial features is my other encoder. And what does that apply to? That only applies to wave period. Okay, so I have this um, this model for now. And, uh, and then I can, well, try running it. And now I see I'm getting up to 9.5 percent of variance explained, which is actually, well, I guess I was wishing, I wish I was explaining 100%, but I can see by uh, kind of considering both these factors, I'm explaining quite a bit more um, than I would have otherwise. Um, so one last thing I want to do before I wrap up this video is I want to talk about why we have these names here. And um, I can use this, um, we can uh, use pipelines uh, like a dictionary, right? So. Um, so for example, that means I can put both here. And what will that give me? That will give me this column transformer that I created right here. And so if I wanted to, I could um, kind of peek at what this thing is doing as a way to debug my model. I could say fit transform. And then what I could do here is I could say, well, this is the data I'm working with. So I could see that, um, well, and then I guess I'd actually uh, need to have some column names here as well. But I could see, well, this is what um, what I'm dealing with. So let me do a data frame here. I, I can see that it has all these columns here that have the one hot encoding. And then I have these columns here that are doing um, polynomial features on the other things. So this is the data that I'm using to try to predict what the wave height is. So even though I'm kind of starting with just these two columns, after I do all this transformation, I'm, I'm actually giving um, I'm giving the, the linear regression here at the end of my pipeline quite a bit more information to work with, and that's why we're able to do much better uh, better here. So as the very last step, um, what I would like to do, so I saw that um, model four was clearly the best one, right? So that's the one I'll recommend. Now, it's possible if I'm doing four different models, one of them just kind of by luck does better, and that's why I, I hung on to my... Um, uh, to my training data, right? I only used, uh, or my test data, I only used training data for cross validation scoring. So at the very, very end, I'm going to fit this data to these things, just like that. And then let me just run that. And then I could use it to make predictions, right? Let me just remember how to do this because it's useful. I could use this to make predictions on my test data frame like that. I could make all these predictions for what the waves could be. Or I could, um, as a convenience, score how good those predictions are against my test DF of wave height. And I see, well, now I'm explaining 8.4% uh, of variance, right? So I did get a little bit lucky there. But still, I can see this is clearly better than, than my other models were.